Hello YouTubers, this is Cesta Ace back again with another video, this time concentrating primarily on some videos in my collection that I have been watching over the past couple of weeks. I also received that Sega Master System game that I've been waiting on, so one more hole in my collection that I got, get to fill. And if I have time, as my good buddy xfile 278 would say, I'm going to try and stick in a Brucey bonus at the end. Let's start with the game. This is a game that was not released in the US. It is called Arcade Smash Hits from Virgin Games. And all three games are from Atari. Centipede, Missile Command, and Breakout. This was released in 1992. Has the obligatory eight languages on the back. Um, defend cities from never-ending nuclear attack and missile command. Bash bricks with a bat and ball and breakout. Eradicate a garden full of mutant insects and centipede. For the first time ever, three classic arcade blasts from the past are brought together in one cartridge for unlimited playability. Okay. Clasps are not broken, but for some strange reason, the cartridge decided to pop out. No manual, but at least I get to add a game to my collection. Now on to the videos that I've been watching over the past couple of weeks. I've already touched on this film some. Uh, this is a film that I have grown to love in the short time that I've known that it exists. Uh, when it was released in 2001 in Hong Kong, it was the number one comedy there. And it was released stateside by Miramax, Shaolin Soccer. This disc has both the American cut, which runs 89 minutes, and the Hong Kong cut, which runs 112 minutes. And the Hong Kong cut is cool because it includes a song and dance uh, number that was cut from the American version. The premise of the story is basically some has-been uh, martial artists decide to stage a comeback and their first attempt is to combine martial arts with singing and that doesn't go over too well. So then they figure well combining martial arts with soccer is a much better fit. So that's what they go for. Get ready to kick some grass. The humor in this film is really funny, unlike the humor in some Hong Kong films, which I can find painful at times. The humor in this film, although gross in places, is hilarious. So I highly recommend this film. Okay, this next one is one I saw on the big screen when it came out in 1981. And watching the DVD, it's much better than I remembered it being. And I would guess that the reason that is is because since then I have had more um, exposure to this uh, first sequel that I have with the original film. Film is the Cannonball Run, directed by Hal Needham, who. Uh, started off as an actor, then became a stunt man, then became a stunt coordinator, and then became a director. Kind of sounds like somebody else who's in the cast of this film, Jackie Chan. Now the film also includes Burt Reynolds, Roger Moore, Farrah Fawcett, Dom DeLuise, Dane Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Adrian Barbeau, Jamie Farr, Terry Bradshaw, Mel Tullis, etc., etc., etc. This goes on and on. And um, the commentary track by the producer and director, Hal Needham, a lot of uh, neat tidbits in there. One of the things he mentioned Hal Needham did was when it was screened for the first time for a paying audience, he was in the back of the theater. It seems to be something that directors like to do because Steven Spielberg has done it and Alfred Hitchcock did it a few times. And it's usually to wait for a key, key sequence that they want to see how the audience reacts to. But anyway, what he mentions is when this first started, 
the opening credit sequence, the audience went nuts because they had never seen so many A-list actors in one movie. And it's just one in the credits after another. Starring Burt Reynolds, Roger Moore, Tom DeLuise, Farrah Fawcett, Roger Moore. One of the other uh, tidbits that uh, Hal Needham gets into on the commentary track is that in the film you have Roger Moore. Roger Moore is not parodying 007, James Bond. He's parodying Roger Moore. He thinks he's Roger Moore. And he drives an Aston Martin, just like the one in the James Bond films. And it's got all of the gadgets like smoke and oil and so forth, just like in the James Bond films. And the theme that plays while he's racing on screen is very similar to the James Bond theme of that time. In fact, uh, Needham says that they came within one note of being sued by MGMUA, who said, knock it off. And in, uh, subsequently, in the future Bond films that Roger Moore was in, his contract stipulated that he could never parody James Bond or himself or anything remotely like that uh, in any other film. Also interested to find out that the producer actually took part in the real Cannonball Run races that took place. There were five of them. The first race they only had a couple of teams show up. The second race around 12. The third race uh, over 20. The fourth race over 30. And the fourth, uh, fifth race I believe they said had 48 teams in it. And out of all those races, no wrecks. Only one car didn't finish, and that was because the guy blew his engine. But, all three Cannonball Run films, although the third one is sometimes known as... Speed Zone, I think it is, are the Cannonball Rally in the UK. Um... He mentions, the producer does, that in the real cannonball races, uh, he rode in an ambulance. That was how they were getting past the cops and being able to drive so fast. He, they, they were in an ambulance and they had a doctor in there and they had the doctor's wife and they had um, the two drivers, the, well, the driver and the navigator, or the driver and the co-driver, however you want to put it. And that's the kind of vehicle that Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise drive, and they have a doctor who's a proctologist, and the guy is just over-the-top funny. And um, Farrah Fawcett is kidnapped by them and shot full of... Uh, happy medication and then she seems rather disappointed that she wasn't gang banged. I don't know if I understood what she said correctly. Her character is a little ditzy in this film but it's a likable character and it's a likable film. Dom DeLuise is hilarious in this film and as Hal Needham points out in the commentary track uh, Bart Reynolds considered, well, at least Dom DeLuise said that Bart Reynolds considered that he was um, the one who made Bart Reynolds funny. But he plays in here uh, him him uh, the main character, but he also has an alter ego called Captain Chaos. Dun 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 dun. Which uh, whenever he needs to spring into action to save damsels in distress or what have you. And there is a scene at a parker bar where Farrah Fawcett and uh, Adrian Barbeau and one of the other women get dragged in, dragged, dragged into a bar by some bikers and they're gonna, you know, do some naughty things to them. And to the rescue comes, dun 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 dun, Captain Chaos. 
Meanwhile, Jackie Chan is kicking butt on the outside of the um, micro bar. Strangely, though, Jackie Chan doesn't play a Chinese character. He plays a Japanese character. And I'm wondering if uh, he, he actually knew what he was saying when he was speaking Japanese or whether it was uh, all done phonically. I don't know. Okay, this next up. Looney Tunes Spotlight Collection 7. There are 26 cartoons on here. And the thing I love about these uh, DVD collections is they include cartoons that they never, ever show on television. Especially um, as they like to limit the cartoons they show on television to the ones that star their main uh, hit characters. And they produced a lot of cartoons that didn't have hit characters in them. They were more uh, one-offs. Those never get shown. So this is pretty cool. And occasionally a black and white one will crop up. And I've got a, a Laserdisc box set. I've got two Laserdisc box sets of Looney Tunes and Mary Melody cartoons. And one of them devotes an entire side of one of the discs to black and white uh, Mary Melody cartoons produced by Leon Schlesinger, but directed by Rudolf Ising. Um, and um, those were the start of the Mary Melody cartoons, and the premise was to take uh, songs that Warner Brothers owned in their library and create an animated cartoon around them. And their catchphrase at the end, not, uh, that's all folks, but um, that's the end, folks, I believe is how it went. Of course, later on, Bugs Bunny would occasionally say, and that's the end. Okay, this is one I got from Sinister Cinema, and it's called Bang Your Dead from 1965. It's an Italian film. It's also known as Spy in Your Eye, which is probably a more accurate uh, title for the film. What happens is that American spy gets captured and is implanted with a miniature camera with a uh, transmitter has a very limited range but uh, they use that to uh, garner a lot of uh, top secrets and the allies are racing to try and find out what is happening and why it's happening and and who's behind it and so forth anyway pretty good movie and the thing I like about it at near the beginning there's a long sequence of a uh, Citroen DS uh, driving around and for those of you who have seen my front home page to my YouTube channel there is a uh, Citroen, D Citroen DS right there I always have thought that that car was pretty cool looking this is from Rankin Bass Mad Monster Party. This was made for a theatrical release. Rank and Bass are probably better known here than they are outside of the U.S. They produced a lot of stop, stop mo they produced a lot of stop motion animated uh, specials. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Year Without a Santa Claus, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, uh, Nestor, The Long-Eared Donkey, so forth, so on, and so, so forth. This was made for a theatrical release and stars the voice of Boris Karloff and Phyllis Stiller. She plays um, the voice of Frankenstein's monster's mate, if that makes any sense. All of the other male characters, Felix Flanken and um, Dracula and uh, the zombie uh, Lynch or whatever the name is uh, the Wolfman um, all of them are done by the same guy Alan Swift and I used to watch this TV on TV all the time in the 70's and love it love it love it this includes uh, some bonus features Mad Monster Party, Making of a Cult Classic, Featurette, It's Sheer Animagic, Secrets of Stop Motion Animation, Featurette, Groovy Ghouls, 
the Music of Mad Monster Party featurette, and two sing-alongs plus the trailer. And I had been looking for this on DVD ever since DVD came out. And so when this, they, they did release it, I jumped on it. And this is a British series that is, well, it just it describes descriptions of what it does. I'm going to try and stick a link to some um, scenes down there from this. All I'm going to say is watch the clips because um, it's way over the top, but it's hilarious. I'm talking about bottom. This is series two. This is a PAL standard release. I have a multi-standard, multi-region DVD player. And this is not the only one that I have that is encoded for both regions 2 and 4. I say regions 2 plus 4, which I guess I could joke and say, I guess they mean region 6. I know, 2 and 4. Which 2 is Europe and 4 is Australia, if I remember correctly. And I love Moon Lee. She's one of my favorite Hong Kong actresses, along with Michelle Yeoh. And this is a film with her in it. Moon Lee, that is. The Revenge of Angel. This is a VCD release. And is from... However you pronounce that. I also publish DVDs, Blu-rays, and Laserdiscs. The sound quality is very good, and the picture quality is stunning. And it makes the point that I've been trying to make in the past, which is VCD unfairly has a bad rep, mainly from the pirated VCDs that are, are so common. But the commercial releases can look very good, as does this one. Two discs, of course. Disc A. And one of the things I find common with VCD releases, uh, the two discs are different colors. Now, the basic premise of this film is that the Moon Lee character is... Uh, killed in a fire before the opening credits even but then her ghost comes back and it, uh, is trying to help another martial artist who he's trying to um, right wrongs and so forth I want to mess this up anyway um, so her ghost helps him out and then she becomes in peril because um, he saves the life of a woman, and that means she can't reincarnate Moon Lee. So they construct a, a small boat to take her to, well, they say the afterlife, but if she's a ghost, then isn't she already in the afterlife? Anyway, um, it's really cool because they have this river lined with lanterns that are lit and this is at, at night and the boat is lit it's a small boat but it's floating down and on the deck of the boat you have full-size Lily and and uh, her what are supposed to be her servants on the way they have to like but they turn out to be a bad guys and then the demons show up trying to claim Moon Lee and they try pulling out her spirits and if they remove all of them then uh, she cannot reincarnate and she's damned to hell <laughs> so I tried to explain this movie to my wife and I, was, I had a hard time doing it but one spirit leaves and this 
this old guy runs and he catches the leg and he's going up and then another one leaves and he catches the other leg and he's being carried further and further in the air and he notices the, uh, the bad guys that are somewhere else but within sight of him since he's up in the air are uh, performing incantations and so forth that are causing the demons and so forth to attack Moonlee's ghost on the ship and so he instructs the, the guy who was being trained by Moonlee to go and uh, fight them which he does Then he gets into trouble and then he sends a, a woman who is in love with the guy who's in love with the ghost um, to help save him and I'm going to stop there because it's rather convoluted and hard to explain, but it's a very good film. I highly recommend it. This is the Brucey bonus I'm going to show. This is the 2012 Disney calendar that's exclusive to annual pass holders. And what's cool about it, apart from the fact that it's free, or was free, and we got two copies. I put one for me and one for my wife. It comes with these things. This is for Cinderella. This is a uh, letter addressed to Dear Pass Holder. Okay. The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. The Lady and the Tramp. The Jungle Book. Sleeping Beauty, Robin Hood, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Beauty and the Beast, this video is getting so long nobody's going to watch it, The Lion King, Toy Story, Lilo and Stitch. And I love this movie. Have it on uh, DVD. The Princess and the Frog. Okay. Until next time, stay awesome.